Good morning. Good morning, sir. Hoping this rain had stopped before yeah. I got here. You and me both. I'm Steve. Steve Corey. So this is what we got, huh? Uh, box of goodies over there and that engine over there. So this is the engine. It does not have oil in it. Okay. Uh, literally pull out of the box and put the torque converter okay. on there. That one, that does run. Okay. Um, it starts fairly easy. Today. You said this one will start and does run? Yeah. It's probably been a minute. Goes and the brakes, both brakes are set up and work. Okay. Literally just throwing an engine on and going for that one at least. All right, I'll, so I'll load them up here and then we'll get you paid. How long you been doing the YouTube thing? Since 2009. Right. Bald Eagle 242 is the channel. Yeah, definitely check it out. Hit that subscribe button. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate it. There he is. There you go. Yep, appreciate Thank it. You. Go ahead and get started on this one here. I assume that they have the choke tied open because it's hard to start. I have to spray starting fluid in it to get it to start. And then I see here somebody has either cut off the governor or it's come loose, it's broke loose. And uh, this thing does not rev up very far. It's like the throttle linkage is not opening the throttle plate all the way. This is based on this date code. Uh, if you're not familiar with how to read these date codes on these old Briggs motors, your first two numbers here are the year it was made. The second two numbers are the month it was made. Fifth and sixth numbers are the day it was made. So this one was made on April 22nd, 1996. I have no reason to believe that this is not the original motor on this cart, but I don't see a date on this cart. I don't even see a place where it's ever had a serial number or a plate on it to know what the date and how old the cart itself is, but I assume it's the same. Probably is from the 90s with dice on the uh, valve stem. And guys, if you've got one of these things, I know a lot of people like to unhook the governors to get a little more speed out of them. I can tell you, this thing would not still be running if this had been run with a full throttle without a governor on it as long as it has. So leave that governor hooked up on them. All right, now get us back in here where we can see a little bit better. All kinds of stuff going on in here that ain't supposed to be. Your throttle linkage, so we'll come up with a better idea than that. Probably wouldn't run if they didn't have tie wraps. Seen a lot of stuff on these old carts and mini bikes and stuff over the years where kids mostly that just really need somebody to show them how to do this kind of stuff more than anything. They try to fix it with whatever they've got, and some of them are pretty darn ingenious. We do have a kill wire still hooked up here. All right, this is the part that connects to the internal part of your governor here. Well, another part of your throttle linkage was just literally stuck on there just from all the oil and dirt and grime. There's an extra little bracket that should be on here. And this guy did give me a box of parts here on this thing. Sure enough, the part that I need is in here. So this goes on the side of the carburetor right here. So you can hook your linkage and stuff up to that. So, all right, I think I found most of the parts. You've got the swivel goes in there like that. Actually goes behind it. So this is backwards. So it goes like that. And then this bolt here has been stripped off because it won't go through there. It's actually been broke off. It's not broke off in the hole though, because I've already looked. But what I did is I found another bolt here. The bolt I found is a lot longer. I want to show you something here. It always surprises me that a lot of people don't realize they've already got a tool to cut these bolts to length. And I'll show you what that is here in just a minute. You probably already got one in your toolbox. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that through there. It doesn't matter whether it's in this piece or not. It's going to be the same distance. And obviously you can see that's too long. So what I want to do is leave maybe a quarter to, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch of thread sticking out there. All right, and the tool I'm going to use is just a good pair of crimpers or wire strippers. These have got holes in them around here, and they're even, most of them are labeled, you know, 440 bolts, 1024 bolts, 1032, and so on. This one is a 632nd. One side of this is threaded, 
one side is not, you want to take your bolt and thread it through the threaded side first so that it's going through your cutters like that. And I'll use this for a gauge to kind of see how long I want that to be. But keep in mind, it's going to cut right between there. I can always cut it again if it's too long, but you can just literally snip that bolt off. And when you back it out, it fixes and straightens out the threads. Check your wire cutters. You may already have a set of these in your toolbox. So you can see those threads thread right in there, no problem. Once you get that bolt the right length, then that linkage will work the way it's supposed to. All right, I am gonna have to make another linkage rod for this part that runs down to the governor. Try to match it up as close as I can. Then we'll come up here. That'll work for that. Cut this off probably about right there. Push that through there. Bend this down so we can hold that in there without it coming out. That's what opens and closes your throttle and your governor adjusts it down here. So generally leave it too long. And then to adjust it, I just take this and bend right, it. Go ahead and start getting this thing back on here. All right, one thing I want to show you here, I took this spring off the tank so I could show you how it hooks up on the governor here, but that goes on there like that. And that is designed to be able to slide back and forth like that. So that when you're on the throttle, it's stretchy. When you're not, it kind of drops down out of the way. So I'll put it back on the tank because it's easier to get on this side, but I just wanted to show you that before I put it on there. All right, and this spring could be a little tricky because you got to kind of angle it sideways. Kind of hook it over one side there and then pull that over like that. Down here on the bottom and look at it. Not only did I find the serial number here on the bottom that I told you I couldn't find on this thing, but I started looking at how this could connect down here. And I'm pretty sure this is the way this throttle linkage is going to connect to this thing and then connects there. And then this is where you control your throttle on this thing. If you didn't already figure this out, I'm underneath here, underneath the back of the gas tank. I did end up replacing this cable. I didn't show it on camera, but I wanted to make sure I had a good cable. And the end of this was kind of boogered up a little bit. So the little bracket I found stuck down here. You saw it hit the floor earlier in the video. This spring here was in the bag, connects to the return on the throttle. I did bend this cable all the way over. And then the nut right here, I'm not sure if something's supposed to be in that right there or not. Somebody can comment in the comments below. This is for the handle linkage off of a lawnmower. And it just, it allowed me to tighten this down better so there was no pinch in this cable. And then I did the same thing underneath where it connects to the throttle pedal. And, and guys, if you don't know how to set the governor on this too, to set the governor for your linkage down here, on this right here, you loosen this nut, turn this all the way to the right, while your throttle is full throttle. We get this thing fired up here. We should have a full working governor and a full working throttle now. Go ahead and try to start this thing up here now that I got all this linkage back together and see if that governor's working. Hopefully there's no problems on the inside of it. Kill switch on, choke on. Did fill the tank up with gas. Yep, fired on the first pull. I think my governor is working the way it's set up. Starting to wonder if something may be wrong with the internal part of that governor. All right, guys, here's where I'm at on this thing. I think something is wrong with the internal linkage on this governor because even though I've got everything hooked up correctly outside here, when this thing is running, this lever for the governor makes no effort to try to slow this engine down. So that's telling me something has come apart or somebody has removed some parts from inside here. As tempting as it is just to hook this thing back up directly the way it was, I at least want to pull this side cover off and make sure there's not some parts in there that are broken floating around in the oil. You know, that's a recipe for disaster. So I'm going to pull it apart here. Hopefully the parts are in here to hook this governor back up. If not, I'll either have to decide if I am going to hook it back up directly with no governor or just order some parts to fix it. Not that hard to take this motor apart. You got four bolts on the motor here. You got your linkage here. Um, you have to disconnect your kill wire here. 
We can take this clutch bolt out here. That'll pull everything off to the side. I actually looked at pulling this cover off without taking the motor off. And on some items, tillers and stuff like that, you can get this side cover off without removing the engine from the, the equipment. But with this chain guard brace here, you know, I'd either have to cut that off or just take the motor off. I mean, you can literally take one of these motors off in five minutes. So it's not that big a deal. I'll go ahead and get it off here, get it on the workbench. We'll drain the oil and we're gonna pull this side cover off and see what's inside of here. Here's the main reason why if your governor stops working, you don't want to keep running your motor. Pieces of metal caught down in here, a couple good sized pieces. All it takes is for one of these to get stuck up in the motor. And then here, you can see how that's all bent up, but yeah, you can bypass the governor when it quits working, but you're not going to bypass these pieces floating around in your engine. Before you pull your camshaft out or any other parts in here, turn it so these timing marks line up with each other. You got one on your tooth here on your crank, and you got one here on your uh, gear on your cam. So don't pull this out until you get that lined up. Definitely don't put it back together before you get them lined up anyway. But the notch or the divot on that tooth right there on your crank has to line up with the divot in the cam gear right there. Once you do that, you can pull this cam out. Now there's gonna be some tappets or valve lifters fall down here, and you wanna try to get those back in the same holes you take them out of. So pay attention to which hole they come out of. I'll hold this one and let the other one fall out. That way I know this one goes in the back of the motor I'll set that down there, and this one goes in the front of the motor. This is that little piece I was showing you. So our, no matter how, what we hooked up on the outside, that governor wasn't doing anything. All right, I did label these intake and exhaust. Not mission critical if you don't do that. I just like to put all my parts back exactly the way they came out. Definitely got this broke off here. The gear itself, surprisingly, even with metal parts down in here, uh, seems to be fine. I'll pull that out and look at it closer, but... It's all this crap that's floating around down in here. In fact, I think there's, you know, there's little parts and pieces of broken stuff in here. This is another good reason, too, when you change oil. But I like to take a paint strainer, real fine paint strainer, or even an old T-shirt, and drain your oil through that filter or T-shirt. And you can see metal in the oil sometimes. Can help you kind of identify problems like this before they get catastrophic. All right, I got this all cleaned out, made sure there wasn't any more metal pieces or shavings down in here or anywhere in this thing. Another thing here, if you've got one of these apart, this gear will slide right off and there's a little key in there. Make sure that's still in there. On this governor, I don't see anything wrong with this plastic piece, even though there was a big piece of metal laying right down in here. I'm really surprised this isn't damaged, but everything seems to be functioning with this. So what I'm gonna have to do is try to find the part to replace this, get that replaced. Not sure if I've got one or not. I gotta go start looking through my parts bin, see if I can find one, but show you something on this cam here that I noticed here after I got this apart here, but you can see here where pieces of metal have gouged this cam lobe here. Something's got caught right there. This lobe here, right on that corner there, and you can see where it's been gouged right there. Little dings and dents all over in this thing. Even the cam gear itself, you can see here where something has uh, went around the teeth on that. I don't really see it from the side, so there's enough tooth there that it's still able to stay in time and run, but if you look at that right there, you can definitely see where something has went around this cam gear and gouged it. I didn't see any problem on this gear. So I don't think the piece went between the crank gear and the cam gear. I'm guessing it must have went through, got caught up in this cam gear around something else. Make sure if you do take this off too, you put this back on so your timing mark is facing towards the outside. I'm just curious here. Try this here. I'm not really worried about timing this thing right now. I just want to see possibly if a piece of metal 
Got caught in that, would have went around that thing somehow. Because it definitely caught this and had to have hit something else. There's a pretty rough spot there right at the top. Right now, more than anything, I just want to make sure that this housing isn't cracked before I put any more time into this thing. Boy, it's been beat to heck and back. You can see all over on this thing where it's been hit. Housing's all nicked up, dinged up in here. Even this connecting rod here, you can see where it's been hit. Get this down here where we can look at it a little bit better. Oh yeah. Even right there, there's actually a piece missing out of that connecting rod there. Boy, that piece has been banging around in there for a while. Amazing it's not caught something that locked it up or blew it up. Man, that connecting rod's got a big chunk missing out of there where a piece probably went in behind this counterbalance. I don't see any complete cracks through the housing though. Surprisingly, the piston and the skirt on the bottom of the piston, from the best I can see up in there, do not appear to be damaged. Uh, you're looking straight up into the piston right now on the underside so you can see the skirt. More than anything, I just want to make sure that the uh, piston skirt isn't damaged. Best I can tell, you can see it's been beat up a little bit in there, but I think it'll still run the way it is, so we'll find out. Even right there, you can see where something's hit that right there. There's a piece missing right there where something has caught that. So we're gonna have to get this off to get this replaced. And I know some of these parts are hard to find anymore, so hopefully we can find what we need here. And there's a little clip down in here you gotta push off. Turn that around so that counterweight's up at the top. We should be able to pull this out of here. Right there, you can see where that's broke off there. So this is the part that spins your governor up and down and with that piece not on there, that governor's not gonna do a darn thing. I did find this governor linkage here, but it's a little bit different than the one that I've got. So uh, I wasn't sure if this would work or not. So I did keep digging. I actually did find part that's exactly like the one that's broke off here. I'm not sure if this was the only piece you had. I'm really not sure if this would work or not because when I look at this piece here, the correct piece for this engine comes almost straight back. When you look at it compared to this one, the little flipper part is going to be in a different location. Now, if you put this in here, and you do have to turn this counterbalance, if you've still got your crank in here, turn this so this is all the way on this side in here, and this will barely fit in. The other thing here, before I show you how that fits in there, this piece here is longer. This is not the correct one for this engine. So even if you use this one, you would have to re-drill this hole so that it would mount up with the case. If not, this is going to stick way out here and the hole's gonna be in the wrong spot and it would allow this to slide back and forth in the engine. But if that was all you had, I really don't know if this would work or not. Um, it will fit in there, but like I said, you'd have to drill your hole here for your little clip. And then I think this, where the gear lines up, is not going to hit that. I don't know how well this will work, but I'm gonna try to put a light inside of here. I'm just curious, if I had to use that one, would this work with this gear? And I don't know how well you can see that down in there. That's pulled all the way out right there. Looks like it's barely gonna catch it, but I don't know. I'd be kind of skeptical to try to use that one just because it doesn't line up the way it really needs to. If we take that one out, put this one in here. This is the correct one for this motor. And it took some digging to find this piece. Anyway, with that piece, but you can see with this one here, it squarely hits dead center on that governor mechanism. So I would not use that other part unless it was absolutely everything I had and I had to use it. I do know this part here too is not available from uh, Briggs or any of the dealers that I found. I even looked on eBay and Amazon. There had been some of these sold on eBay before, but I didn't see any from current sellers. So this is a tough part to find which may force us in the future to kind of figure out how to get some of these other parts to work. I don't think this would bend very well, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you guys have ever had to do this to switch these parts out, if this does work in this motor. All right, I also found this piece here. It goes on the bottom of the connecting rod, and I always called this an oil slinger, but the official Briggs and Stratton term for it is an oil dipper. 
So if you're looking for parts and need that part, it's an oil dipper on this is. But this piece goes on the bottom of your crank and it has to angle this way. So the bottom points out and it bolts up right underneath your connecting rod there. And then that dips the oil or slings the oil around when you're running the engine here. Don't know what it would do to run without this, but I'm sure the engine would not get the adequate or as much oil as it's supposed to. So I don't know how long it ran without that one, but all right, what I'll do out. is go ahead and pull the bottom of this connecting rod off first. Go ahead and replace this dipper because once this is in there, it's going to be hard to get to it. That bolt there was loose. Doesn't surprise me the way everything's beat around in here. piece of that piece that got broken off there. I can already read the comments you guys are putting down in the bottom here because I didn't pull the piston out of this and look at it, but as Terrell says, it's not the space shuttle. All right, and there's the other piece of that dipper that broke off on there. All right, when you put this piece back on, make sure it's angled this way. And that just barely clears the bottom of the case right here. And I'd say this would come into really good play if you happen to let an engine get low on oil and you don't have this in here, you're probably not gonna get any oil up in this engine. All right, on these connecting rod bolts too, they have a very specific torque setting that you have to make sure you use a digital certified torque wrench, quarter inch drive only. You want to tighten these down until that digitally certified torque wrench clicks just right. If you don't, as soon as you touch the pull rope on this motor, it's going to blow up. So make sure you use that digitally certified torque wrench and pull it over here until you hear it click. Click. And do the same thing on this side. Click. That's all there is to that. When you put this governor rod back in here, make sure your counterbalance is at the top. You got enough room here to get this in. Just slide that through there, and there is a little washer that goes on here. I find it's easier just to slide that out and hold this over the hole. And then just push that through there, rather than trying to fit it over the end. And you can take a small pair of needle nose pliers and just put that in that hole right there. Just make sure that's in there good. This is down at the bottom, and you can put your lever back on here. trying to fight me here a little bit, but just take a pair of pliers and kind of push it up on there. All right, guys, here is how this governor is supposed to work. So you've got your throttle cable connected in here, pulls that over like that. So when you push that throttle down like that, that opens and closes your throttle here. Now on the side part here, you've got this gear inside the uh, crankcase. And when this spins, it slings these little counterweights out like that. And when those counterweights get slung out, it pushes this pin out. And then what that does, so my finger will be the pin. So right now I've got the throttle, I'll hold it wide open. You can see here at the top, hopefully you can see that. You can see here, that opens and closes your throttle. And then once the engine revs up to a certain RPM, it slings those little counterweights out and it pushes this. And then you'll see there on the top of the engine when I push this, that backs your throttle off. So once this gets so much momentum, it backs it off and then when it slows back down, even if you hold the throttle, you know, I'm still holding the throttle wide open down here. That will reduce the RPMs on this motor by cutting the carburetor off. And that's how this thing is supposed to work. And I'm pretty sure once we get it back together, it's going to work as it's intended to. All right, I will show you here, if you're dead set on trying to get as many RPMs out of these little engines as you can without totally disabling the governor, where this spring connects to this throttle lever down here at the bottom, that's the spring that slides up and down on the external part of this arm here. Take this spring or the bracket that the spring mounts to, needle nose pliers will fit back in there. If you bend this so that that spring is tighter, that will fight this governor arm here more. And bending that down so it tightens this spring up on the outside, that will give you 
more RPM out of this engine and vice versa. If you've got one that's running too fast and you want to govern it down, bend that so that spring is looser. That spring is effectively fighting your counterbalance here on the inside of the motor. So it makes this harder to push. So the tighter that spring right there is, the harder this has to push before it's going to affect the speed of this motor. So that's the tip I'll give you here instead of totally disabling these governors is just set them up so that they'll maybe get a few extra RPMs, but don't go overboard, especially if you've got an engine that's been abused the way this one has. They're not going to handle that extra RPM very long. So, all right, when you're ready to put this thing back together, take compressed air and blow this out as best you can. I already did it. I didn't want to do it on camera because it's really loud. I did go ahead and take the tape off of this, but this is the lifter or the uh, tappet intake cam. Take a generous amount of assembly lube. This stuff is pretty thick. And what that'll do, I put a lot on the top there. It'll allow this thing to hold up in that hole, kind of like creates a vacuum. This gravity's gonna try to pull it back out. And this way it'll hold it up in there while you're trying to get it together. But then push that up in there and that lube will kind of create a vacuum there and hold that. Now it won't hold forever. So just get it in there and, and get it in place. Then go ahead and get your intake or your exhaust tap it ready. And then do the same thing on your exhaust one. And I use a lot of assembly lube when I'm putting stuff like this together to make sure everything is well lubricated before it starts pushing oil up into it. All right, and what I'll do here, kind of hold those in place. I'll get my timing mark close on my crank. So I know about right there is where that timing mark needs to be. I'm trying to hold those here. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this where the camera's at, but put a lot of assembly lube on your cam lobes. That way everything is good and lubricated when you fire this thing up. And I'll get this turned so my timing mark is pretty close to where it belongs. That way the cam lobes will be out of the way. And when you push that back together, Make sure your cam lobes are up in there and your timing marks match up. If you get those timing marks pretty close to lined up, that ensures that when you push this cam back in here, the cam lobes are gonna be in the correct spot to let them match up to everything. And then what I'll do is kind of hold all this together so that that lube I put on those cam lobes will get moved around in there really well. And I'll turn it all the way around. Make sure your dippers, you know, not hitting here. Um, and the other thing I'll do is put some lube on these gears themselves. You can't put too much of this stuff in here, so don't worry about that. And you know, I guess I should have told you too, I did file these teeth down that were kind of boogered up so there wasn't any raised spots on the surfaces or the face of the teeth. So it is the same cam, but I did file the teeth down so they uh, don't have any sharp, bad edges on them. You should be able to come all the way around and your timing mark should line back up you know, on the compression stroke there. And then your timing mark on your tooth and that lines up perfectly. You can kind of see here too now, this is where your governor gear goes. So that plastic gear rides on the bottom of your cam gear and then it pushes this lever right there for your governor. Couple things to check just to be sure if you had this gear off, make sure your keyway's in there too. Now the other thing here too, you might have noticed when I took this cover off, this gasket came off in one piece. So it's still in pretty good shape. And I did take brake cleaner and Scotch-Brite and a scotch pad and cleaned up this surface here. But what I'll do is I'll take some uh, oil resistant gasket maker and I'll put a real thin bead around here just to give it some extra ability to seal. It doesn't take much of this stuff. And if you read the directions on this, you're supposed to apply this, put it together hand tight, and then let it sit for one hour and then come back one hour later and tighten it down to torque specs. And you're not supposed to add any fluids to it for 24 hours after that, so. I kind of pull this towards the outside so you don't get too much inside the engine. You don't want to get this in there where it's going to gum up the engine. Real thin is all you need. You don't want this stuff on here so thick that it's oozing out around the cover or under the cover or in the in the motor. I like to let that skin over for about five minutes and then put it on. That way it's less likely to ooze out underneath there. This is just a carburetor intake cleaner, cuts oil real well, and just spray that on a rag. And then just wipe this surface down real well.
All right, one last check here before we put this cover on. Our timing marks are lined up. Our keyway's in the uh, crank gear. Our governor's down here where it's supposed to be. I did not tighten this up yet because I want to make sure I get this adjusted after this gear is in place. Slide this on there. Make sure this seal is good. If it's not, it's a good time to replace that seal. Slide this on there as straight as you can get it. Make sure your uh, little governor gear goes on smoothly and matches up to that cam gear and it should pop right into place. You do not need to hammer this. You gotta get a hammer out, something's wrong. Pull your rope a little bit on the other side. It'll help to get your cam gear and your uh, governor gear lined up and then that you'll see how easy that went on there. That's how easy that should go on. If you have to force this, something's not right. And we'll put these bolts in hand tight, and I will wait about an hour to come back and, uh, and re-tighten them down to spec. And I'll use that same digital uh, certified quarter-inch torque wrench that I used just a little bit ago. In all seriousness, though, if you don't do this kind of work all the time, I would recommend getting a torque wrench so that you can get these bolts torqued to spec because, you know, even though it's not a space shuttle, they, they do have some leeway one way or the other, but you want to try to get them as close as you can. What I'll do is just snug this down, and we'll let that sit there for an hour and then torque it down. All right, once that's set for about an hour, go ahead and tighten these down. And I like to tighten them down in kind of a crisscross pattern. I'm sure there's an actual torque sequence for it, but I'm not sure what that is. But I usually start at the outside corners, alternate corners, and then come to the inside bolts here in the middle. And I, I honestly don't know the torque spec on them. Pretty minimal though. If some of you guys do know that, put it down in the comments so other people have it, that would be awesome. Now that I've got this cover on here, I'll go ahead and adjust this governor arm the way I showed you earlier in the video. Another thing I'll do here before I even put oil in this thing is just pull it over real slowly. We got enough lube in there, it ain't gonna hurt anything to do this, but just make sure that nothing is bound up not trying to start it. Just want to make sure that everything moves and rolls the way it's supposed to. And I think we're right, good. We'll go ahead and get this thing back on here now. I'll hold off on putting oil in it until I get it on here. That way that stuff can set on there as long as possible. But I did go ahead and throw some paint on this while we had the motor out of the way just to kind of make it look as good as we can. I went ahead and put this clutch back on. You have to get that on there first because there's not enough room to get it on here once you get it on the uh, cart without taking the bolts loose and pulling it over a little bit to the side. So I just went ahead and put it on. Something else I did here while this motor was off is I loosened these four bolts up on this pulley and I adjusted the tension on this chain and oiled this chain up real well. So that chain's got a little bit of play in it now. You don't need a lot of play, but you don't want this to be so tight that it's it feels like it's constantly under tension. Use this to adjust the chain tension first, and then the bolts in the motor are used to slide this around to adjust your belt tension. So get your chain set up first, and then when you put the motor on, you can adjust your belt tension, get everything squared up over here. All right, I did get this engine bolted back on. This is kind of my reminder here that it doesn't have oil in it. There went my date tag. This engine takes about 20 to 21 ounces of oil. And on these engines that don't have a dipstick, you basically just pour oil in it until it runs out of this uh, tube here. Added about another ounce to it. It is right to the top of that now. All right, first thing I'm gonna do here, I got the kill switch turned off right now. I just wanna slowly pull this engine over a few times just to get the oil up in it. Turn the choke on. We're going to turn both kill switches on. Assuming I've got everything hooked up right, we're about to find out. She died.
have a working governor. Something wrong with my linkage down here, but the governor itself is definitely working now. For some reason, my throttle pedal is not opening the governor up, but if I do that by hand, it's working fine. That might explain why it didn't idle down. This cable wasn't all the way in there. I think we've made some good progress, and man, that thing started easy. A couple things I did here. Uh, in fact, I think this is why this thing died earlier, because this choke lever was really easy to slide back and forth. I think it vibrated shut and closed my choke is why it died earlier when I first started it. What I did here is took a pair of pliers, mashed that rivet down as hard as I could, just squeezed it really hard, and that has tightened this choke up a lot. So that should take care of that. The other thing I did here on this air cleaner housing was I cut these bolts off, same way I showed you with that linkage on the throttle earlier. Everything is, I got a new air filter for this. When you put these air filters in, you always want to put the screen side down so that it prevents the filter from being sucked into the carburetor is what that's for. And we'll put our housing back on there. So we got a brand new air cleaner in there now. All right, also got the chain guard back on here. Got our chain tension correctly, belt tension correctly. All right, got my throttle linkage finally hooked up and working here the way it's supposed to. She's definitely a little bit of a smoker, but considering what she's been through, she's running. All right, I got a pilot here for this thing now, my buddy Rich here. He's gonna wheel this thing for us here and see what we got going on here. Hopefully this thing won't blow up on us. That's a lot of fun, actually. I think that's gonna have to wrap it up for this video, guys. It turned out to be a lot longer than I expected it to be, but I'll keep this one for myself and have my kids play around with it. I did actually end up coming up with an extra five horsepower motor for this thing that I picked up for free. Picked that up off of a old snowblower that somebody was getting rid of. So hopefully I don't need it, but if I do, I got a uh, motor to put back on this thing. I know this thing's seen better days, but it runs. We can have a lot of fun with it. A couple other projects I've got coming up here. I also work on these little salamander heaters. Uh, I'm going to tear this thing apart. Probably make a video on panel what I find wrong with it. These things are pretty simple to work on. So if you're interested in something like that for heating your shop or whatever, I'll make a video on that too. And I've got another video that I'm already working on here with a John Deere X300. You may have already seen the video I made on this with the cracked hood while I was pressure washing it for this video. If not, check that out how easy these hoods crack. Anyway, this video should be coming out here within the next week or so. I do appreciate you guys watching. I know this video has been a lot longer than I expected it to be. If you're interested in some of these other projects, consider hitting that subscriber button down there. Ding that bell, that way you'll be notified. I've got that other go-kart that came with this as a package deal that I'm gonna put that Predator 212 motor on. Hopefully that video goes a lot smoother than this one does. But anyway, guys, thanks again. Hit that subscriber button, ding that bell. Till next time, take care.